Hello again. In 1976, student demand for alternative and organic methods of production led to the establishment of the Biological Husbandry Unit, based at Lincoln University. The BHU has between 50 and 70 students taking their courses each year. Manager Bill Martin explains. This is the BHU, and the BHU stands for the Biological Husbandry Unit, which is the name given to this training unit when it was set up in the mid-70s. We offer certificate level training in organics and general horticulture and we do that through three main programs. Our year one introduction to organics, which as the name suggests is an intro course where you learn the basics, you know, the pillars, the fundamentals of organic growing and horticulture, plants, soils, composting and the like. Then we offer our year two applied organics program where you take those pillars that you used in year one and you get your own land and your own tunnel house here on our 20 acre organic farm and you have a chance to grow your own crops under the mentorship of a local organic grower. And then you can do what we call the stepping stone program which isn't assessed, you don't get a qualification out of it, but essentially it's a two year low risk lease arrangement where you get to use land and facilities here at the BHU at a minimal cost. We're on Lincoln University campus here and have been for a number of years since the farm was set up in the mid 70s and we complement what happens down on campus really well. You can do diplomas, degrees, postgrad studies down there, a mixture of theory and practical but largely theory. Here we're all about hands on. When we got the line down you'll be able to just put this in like this on the inside probably drop it in like that mm -hmm. and then all you need to do is just go down the side like that and just leave it like that. The history of this unit goes back to about the mid 1970s. It was basically in response to student agitation. People won't remember but it was the um, energy crisis in the mid 70s with shared cars and all the rest of it and shortage of petrol and high prices. And so consequently the students wanted to know why at their, in their course they didn't get um, input into organics and sustainability and self-sufficiency and these kind of things. And I said to them, they were a, quite a radical bunch in those days, and uh, th that if they wanted to do it, I had the land and we, were, we could do it out of sight, out of mind, down in the corner of the Hort research area and, um, and see how we got on. And that's how it started. I happened to be the lecturer in vegetable production. I had done 10 years of conventional research on this research area. I was mainly known for precision drilling, pelleted seed and um, high density growing and this type of thing. And I travelled widely in California and the United States and I became disillusioned at seeing farming communities being decimated by mechanisation and all the rest of it. But so when I came back here and it coincided with this kind of unrest um, amongst the students about the same type of thing, it, it was a good opportunity to get involved. It was regarded as muck and mystery and, uh, and people used to laugh in the first instance and make fun. And, uh, but then as we, as, we, uh, as we established it, as the, the biological husbandry unit, and it started to grow and expand and, and so on, and the public took a huge interest. Uh, we used to have um, uh, public field days with six and eight hundred people out just to see, just to look at what we were doing here eventually. And it, and it gradually came that um, they couldn't stop it because the public was interested. So it was really um, the people that, in Christchurch that came forward and, um, and, and really made it work. Certified organics is still on the fringes. But many, many farmers now have plucked out all the beneficial stuff that we've done. I mean, we have people, talk, the scientists and all the rest, rest of it, talking about biodiversity now. We have them talking about mixed herbal pastures and deep-rooting herbs and so on for the health and welfare and environmental effects and all the rest of it. So a lot of the factors that we struggled for and established here have, are now being nitpicked out into the agricultural system. There's no credit given to organics for this, um, but, um, but it, they are organic principles which we've been um, espousing for decades. We're down on the BHU farm and we're in, in an area that's been farmed by some of our Stepping Stone students. And these are students, we've got about half a dozen of them this year, 
who have done our year one course and our year two program and now they're leasing land here at the BHU in a low risk arrangement where they pay a percentage of their sales back to the BHU. And the great thing about that for them is that they can use our land and our facilities and the experts that are here but if they don't grow and sell anything or if they don't the crop fails for one reason or another then they're not out of pocket. The other great thing about it of course is that the, the land is certified organic here so they can sell their produce as certified organic. So this is a great way for them to not just practice what they've learned over the last couple of years but more than anything gain the confidence to go on and do their own thing and to take the next step because we find that's one of the biggest barriers for our graduates is just that confidence to go and invest money and lease land, buy equipment and, and make a start. We've got yes, two students who are running sheep and chickens. So as well as the horticulture which we've done traditionally here, we're now taking the opportunity to let our students branch out into agriculture as well. What I can see looking into the future is a growing demand for students who are environmentally literate and graduates who have a toolbox of farming practices including sustainable techniques that they can apply in whatever situation they're in. I can see a growing interest in sustainable farming from existing farmers and I can see sustainable practices and techniques being considered in every farming decision that's being made and embedded in every farming decision that's being made almost in the same way as health and safety is at the moment. The Organic Training College has an open door policy where they welcome inquiries from both organic and conventional farmers.